So how is everything with you? How are you doing? How is the security, you know, uh, going on? And are you safe? You're just the general situation for those of us who are not, you know, in, in, in the northern Nigeria. Yeah. Well, I am uh, safe, but uh, we are not here to discuss physical safety or mental safety. We are here to discuss uh, our own community safety from hunger, starvation, poverty, insecurity that has been uh, racked on our people by corruption. So that is the safety we are all seeking, you know, social safety. Okay, cool. So let's, I mean, I say you just want to get into it, so let's get right into it. There are some people saying that this is a faceless protest, that the protest has no face. So how do you respond to that? You know, the protest wasn't meant to have a face. It was not meant to have an impact, and it has delivered that okay. 101%. So anybody okay. who is looking for a face can find them on the streets. Okay, so... Nobody who is participating in this protest is uh, wearing masks. And there have been millions of people across Nigeria that have been doing this for the last 10 days. I mean, nine days now. Yeah. Yes. So no, by no face, I think what they mean it's is this. that... Yeah, by no face, I think the question I'm trying to get to is there's no one who is um, particularly the head. No, let, me, let me tell you what they are trying to do. When they, yeah. is it, it's a narrative they frame when they cannot find somebody to bribe to stop the protest. That's what they mean by facelessness. Okay. Okay. If they okay. can't find somebody to bribe or blackmail or smear or threaten or arrest to stop the protest, they'll tell you it's faceless. That okay. is the context in which they mean facelessness. The same people are saying the protest is faceless has arrested a lot of people who are well-known organizers. Every day we are on TV, we are on the internet discussing what is the next level. How can you say we're faceless? But you have to understand the context in which they mean faceless. It's, they can't find anybody to hold who can help them hold or stop the protest. That's the meaning of uh, faceless in their own dictionary. Okay. Then the other question I have is, there seem to be some, I'm going to use a strong word, disorganization, because in the North, they seem to be like, there's a lot of chaos, there's a lot of destruction, there's a lot of, you know, just mayhem. So how is government able to see this? I, I mean, it's a legitimate protest, obviously, but how is the government able to see it as such? warehouses are being burned, uh, they are going into government state house and causing destruction, which by the way, in the US, might I remind you, something like that happened and a lot of people that would do stuff like that are put back behind jail. And that's the January 6th. Uh, you, know. I, you know, please, don't, I don't know how you are framing this, either we are framing it as it is truthful or you are framing it from the point of the government. There is no destruction that took place. The destructions and chaos is was caused by government the first day. They are the ones who went in and started shooting at people. The one you saw in Kano was organized by politicians from the APC. They brought in people from Jigawa. The people who are protesting have shown over these last eight days that they organized. Even when people were shot, they went and buried their dead and continued. Uh, when people are jailed, they didn't allow you to stop them. They have their lawyers handling that. So... There's nobody who is engaging in this protest that has destroyed a thing. It is the government. Even the army went to kill the 16-year-old. They are begging them in Zaria. Yes, so I saw that. Yes. So yeah. I think it's very important that we keep that in mind when we're having conversations like this. It is the government that has killed over 40 people. You saw that video in Kano I did, where yeah. people were peacefully protesting. In Kano, of all places, on a Saturday last week, 
and government came in there and started shooting and you see um videos from Bauchi where they shot in Azari Bauchi, they shot a guy execution style on the street. Have you not seen the okay. video? I saw that video, but I'm gonna challenge you on that. Yeah, that video, the resolution is very old. I actually was going to upload that video. Well, but the, when you say the resolution is old, do you have any information? I was told that, that it is not around. I don't have any information, but it's I don't not, think it's, it's not. That wasn't Boko Haram. That was that was police. There was a police vehicle there. There were okay. people and there was there was yeah. wait now. There was another video. This one this time I think was uh, Katsina, where a police that was driving a water cannon uh, bus, I mean truck, rammed into another police in a truck. Mm -hmm. Do you see that one too? I didn't see that one. Well, yeah. you should ask some of members of your audience. So okay. what is important and what I keep framing to you is that let's assume you don't believe the video that we just mentioned. At least you yes. know that a 16-year-old guy was killed in Kano. That in, I know. In Zaria. Zaria. There, was a, there was a killing that happened last Saturday in Kano. So there were the killings that happened uh, in Kaduna. You saw that one that people were in front of the government house and they were just carrying this and they were yeah. saying, please, please, police, don't shoot. Yes. So I'm trying to contextualize the chaos you are describing that it didn't come from protesters. It came from the government, not okay. the protesters. It is the so, government that... And you saw journalists being beaten up in, in, in Lagos, right? And you, yeah, saw, so, you saw higher talks in Port Harcourt beating up people. Right? I saw that. Can I... So you, so you have all these videos... And you know it didn't come from the protesters, right? The protesters why, were the victims. Why would the legitimate government be going after a protest that is faceless if they can disorganize the protests and you know if this is what they are doing, they are planting there's nobody to really hold accountable other than the three gentlemen that came out and you know went after. So for me, I just I'm trying to push that kind of push you push back and say, well, uh, I think uh, the government has a lot to prove. The burden of proof is on them, but the argument that the government is uh, instigating people only can go so far. And uh, I don't because... know why. I don't know what evidence you need anymore. You know, uh, to be saying that government can we can prove. I've given you proof of how government has been the one creating chaos. The question you asked me is about chaos and disruption. I'm saying this. It was instigated by government. They know how to do that. The Nigerian government has always instigated chaos during peaceful protests. They did it during NSAS. Are you telling NSAS me that? Different. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me that you guys waving the Nigerian flag and uh, singing national anthem at NSAS were chaotic as well? NSAS is different. We're not talking about NSAS. No, no, it's... but there's no difference. What the, the argument is the, the, same the, the, conversation, the, the conversation we're having is where did chaos and mayhem come from? And I'm giving you instances of how the chaos and mayhem came from. You said we can't push the argument far. How far would they need to go before we can push the argument? The argument I'm making for any logical person, again, it's not like I'm I'm on the side of the protesters, and if you see saw some of videos we've some of the videos we've been doing. Uh, the argument I'm just trying to make is why would the government instigate and kill and do all these things? Which again, by the way, uh, I know in the beginning they were paying five thousand. That one people came out, but uh, they are going as far as killing people when there's nobody to arrest or there's no face. So I, I mean, the thing I like about this protest is that it's faceless, to be honest with you. But I just think it'd be some. It is sense. not. It is not faceless. We should not be saying that it's faceless. There, there are the, the people who are protesting are the faces of the protests. The hungry people who came out in their millions, are, they are human beings, they are faces. Don't say it is faceless. Yes. Maybe Thank you like that. what you what yes. you mean is that there is nobody claiming responsibility or leadership for it. But there is leadership. It's just that the leadership this time around is not lousy. You know, you know, protests that are organized by celebrities are different from protests that are organized and done mm -hmm. by people. Mm -hmm. So it's the ordinary people that are in charge of their destiny. They are the ones uh, protesting. So since there's no celebrity now that's involved and uh, they, and they are, none of them has gone near the protest, maybe that's the reason why you're saying it's first less. Yeah. Uh, maybe so because you don't see any big names, you know. But <laughs> this, is, this is big hunger, you know, with 
common people fighting. So, so no, thank you for that. Uh, some people say I'm changing. I'm shifting gears here. Some people say that uh, the opposition is who is behind it. The opposition, you know, you yourself, your presidential candidate, you contested. And uh, I mean, how, what would you say to them if the op they say the opposition is trying to destruct? Yeah. You know, with, you know, look, every government has been confronted with their folly, blame somebody else. They say Nigeria is this even a global disease or uh, um, syndrome. They mm. always had to blame somebody. And if you say I'm one of the organizers, I don't deny it. <laughs> you know, I'm a you know I'm a convener of the movement that is in the front and back of it. So, are there issues of hunger, poverty, corruption? Insecurity and employment in Nigeria, yes. We all know that, should, yes. Should they, should they be addressed? Of course. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Are these people showing any sign that they are willing to address it? No, because you don't do that by increasing electricity tariff, fuel prices, and then you ruin your currency, mm. knowing that most of your citizens depend on, you know, imported food mm -hmm. and, you know, clothes and services to function. And then you don't have your energy system in place uh, since this protest the national grid has collapsed twice so what are why are they looking for excuse why don't they blame themselves for mismanaging the, the economy but that's that's africa leaders for you they're always looking for scapegoats instead of addressing the real social political and economic issues affecting the people Thank you. So the other question that I have for you is, uh, you guys came out with the 15-point agenda. You you know in Nigeria there's the legislative, judicial, and then there's the um, executive. I've seen a lot of videos with the protests, with the protesters saying, Tinubu can do this with a biro. He can just strike with a pen and just get it done. And I think there's some misinformation. Again, it goes back to the leadership so that people can understand that these things are not... There's a national budget that was put in place by Buhari. It's not just something, you know. There's, I don't, there's know, a I don't know why you're spending your time defending this government. Is this, is this like an NTA program? No, no, it's not. No, <laughs> what no, is no. the misinformation? Let's go to it. So that to, we can I, what to is the misinformation? Okay, can we go to the misinformation you have the so that we can address it? Again, I'm not pro-government either. I've seen some of No, no, I'm just saying you're sounding like an NTA presenter. No, 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 it's not the National Education Authority. Well, thank you for that, yeah. for challenging that as well, for pushing back. All I'm just saying is, for those what who What is are the misinformation that you are concerned are about? Watching this. The misinformation is that people on the streets yeah. are saying that Tinubu can just use a biro and just sign this and it will happen. The first subsidy with a pen, they can just do this. You know, talk about uh, the answers, release of some of the protesters. They can just sign a pen. And so there are a lot of things. Uh, the narrative evaluation. But that's not misinformation. It Do you know why people are saying that? He was the one who decided to remove fuel subsidy. So to change it, he's the one that needs to make a simple announcement that we're reverting back to what we now make life hard. Well, how about the legislation? The legislature. What, what did he go to the legislative arm when he removed for a subsidy? No, he announced it the day he was sworn in at the, at the Eagle Square. He's the one who unilaterally said the central bank governor he appointed should float the Naira. Man, he didn't go to the legislative arm. Are you getting my point? And when it comes to the legislative arm, people have seen them do things in few hours. When he wanted to increase the number of years for the IG, it was done in one day. When he wanted to buy a presidential jet for $100 million, did he contact you? Did he contact the legislative arm? When they sent well, 90 well, billion, well, wait well, now, wait, wait, just calm yourself, just calm down. Okay. That's why I'm asking if this is an NTA program so that I, I would have prepared myself <laughs> you know, for it. So when when they sent 90 billion for people going to Hajj, did they go to the legislative arm? No. But most importantly, the reason why Nigerians are out on the street today is because they've lost faith in all these institutions you are talking about. They've lost faith in INEC to conduct free and fair elections. Lost well, faith. I have for you, yes, INEC. lost lost faith in the legislative arm because they're a rubber stamp. They've lost faith in the monetary policy section because of what they did to the Naira and the national currency. They've mm -hmm. lost faith in the judiciary because they are always also endorsing through their uh, through their activities or actions fake elections 
And mm. you know, they are the ones who they will take people to court and they say they stole billions. The next day they free them and they are back as a governor. These are power builders. Um, the president of the Senate. He had allegations of, of over eight eight hundred. I think it's about uh, one hundred and something billion when he was governor. When he went to Niger Delta as minister, more billions were stolen. He's not prosecuted. The person who they declare wanted from Kogi State, Yaya Bello, they can't find him to arrest him. Suddenly, EFCC cannot find him. And we have been told that he was escorted out of the country by the DSS through with the collaboration of uh, immigration. So when simple things cannot be done by these institutions, you don't have uh, a right to be asking the citizens to have faith in them. That is why protests break out. That is why you saw what happened in Kenya and mm-hmm. Uganda. So Where people want to change yeah. the objective conditions without having to wait for compromised institutions. There's no other way to discuss it than just tell the truth about these institutions and don't tell me that Tinubu cannot do anything about this. When those things that affect his interests, personal interests, he gets them passed uh, in a matter of uh, minutes. So, and I've given you some of the examples and that how is it that these things are impossible? It is when something is going to be good for the Nigerian people that there's bureaucracy. But when it is the ruling class, or the Nigerian elite, there's no bureaucracy. While mm. we were at this conversation about, you know, making life easier for the people, Dangote also became an activist mm. and was complaining about his refinery. Within 24 hours, they have resolved this problem. Mm. We have mm. been at our own now for eight days. Nobody has answered to one of the demands. Instead, they sent police to start shooting at people, army killing people. And now they are arresting and detaining people, young and old. So wh- what is it so difficult to address the issues that we're talking about that requires all these bureaucracies that you're talking about? Okay, so thank you. I, I hear what you're saying. I agree with you. Um, and what you are trying to say is that the president needs to have the will. There needs to be political will, which he can just... Say, well, this is what we have to do. Then it has to gather the group and gather, you know, the legislation is able to do that. So, but moving on, uh, you mentioned uh, INEC. Uh, I personally, as a Nigerian, I expected that once he got into power, you know, I have asked the INEC chairman to step down or something of that nature, given how bad the last election was and how INEC, INEC failed uh, all over all of us Nigerians. So, what do you make of that? Because you talk about corruption, and you know, it's part of the demands. It's part of the fifteen demands that the chairman yeah, so, sent packing, and uh, that all the national members, they call them national commissioners of INEC, should be removed because majority of them are members of the APC. There's no way INEC as a body can organize, as it's presently considered, can organize free and fair elections. It's part so, of the demands. Okay. Um. So if I ask if I mean, if you had of your 15, what if the government come back and say they can only do one? Hypothetically speaking. That's why we said non-negotiable. Before we can talk about anything else, you have to do the 15. Is there a timeline or a deadline or like in a month? or Because some of this has to be gradual. No, you are the one who kept saying that this thing needs to be gradual. Are you talking to government and government told you they cannot do it? Of course, no. Mm. Have you spoken to them and they said they don't want to do it? Probably, yes. But Mm. the the timeline will be determined by situational variables. When the first 10 days is done on Saturday, we'll meet again and announce fresh fresh action. Okay. We're, We're not going to look back until we win. Okay. Are you concerned? Are you concerned about the fact that in other parts of the Southwest, like Lagos, I know that there's been some movements and you know people are going about their day. I mean, again, we talked about leadership earlier. Is there any concern from you that once people, you know, some people have to go to work, things have to move, even in the northern part of Nigeria? I, I, I have, think there's have, been protests in Lagos up to Monday, and it's going to resume pretty soon. Okay. The people of Lagos are not complaining. In fact, on the first day of protest, people sat at home on their own. They didn't come out. The whole mm. street, and that is what that was to honor the protest. Mm. So people who didn't come to the protest stayed at home. Mm. So the people of Lagos are not complaining. And 
if they were to complain, we would uh, hear them out and uh, work on those complaints. But nobody has disrupted uh, traffic flow, uh, except in areas where we're having a protest. And uh, if, if that would occur, it will happen because the people themselves would join everywhere and they have joined and done well so far. So that's our least concern. Um, you know, this is a existential nature. I mean, the struggle. So it can't wait for another, it can't wait for another time. Um, there's some people, again, rumor has it that uh, some external people are funding the operation, people from overseas, or people from outside Nigeria. I mean, is there any credibility to that that you are aware of? Because there was, I was watching yes, I'm, a, I'm aware that uh, the program is well-funded by hunger, insecurity, okay. unemployment, uh, lack of uh, opportunities for people, lack of health care, bad roads, and uh, very low minimum wage. The government came out yesterday and said they've frozen some lack accounts. Of, some lack people. of payment of uh, pension for retired workers. Those are the people funding the protests. I know okay. them. And okay. I've asked the government to put them on their watch list. Let, let, don't let those, de you know, subversive <laughs> elements enter yeah. Nigeria or leave uh, Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, so just shifting gears a little bit, there's uh, this uh, Igbo must go, blah, blah, blah. What's your take on that? Is that, I mean, what's your it's, take on that? It's the Lagos State government, governor and Tinubu people that are doing that. And part of the reason they were doing that is to ensure that people from the Southeast are scared not to participate in the protests. Hmm. Um, so they are exactly... The governor came out and pronounced that. The governor came out and said, that's not well, true. The guy, who's, the guy who was treating it is, has everybody in the APC in Lagos and the governor's aides following him on Twitter. And some of them have even retweeted some of his tweets in the yeah. past. Well, they used him for part of the campaigning, so I know of that. I know that part, yeah. Yeah, but so why would the governor say he's not aware of a person who has been closely linked with him? So he's aware of him. Okay. But now, you know, the, their hand has been caught in the cookie jar. That's <laughs> why you see them scrambling and scampering mm. around. Uh, what what do you make of the oil refinery with Dangote and the whole saga, which you mentioned earlier? I, wanted I don't to ask care you. about Dangote. Dangote is part of Nigeria's problem. Um, How is he all... part of That's a big statement to say. If our external outsiders see him as someone who's trying to solve the problem of Nigeria. No, he's not trying to solve the problem. The refinery itself was built on the back of Nigeria with Nigeria funding. Um the problem with the refinery is that it was never completed. It was not designed to be completed because it's a source of uh, dollar round tripping. Uh, so if you get $100 million at, uh, at uh, 300 naira to a dollar and you go and sell it for mm -hmm. 600 why would you want your refinery to be finished? He has already made his money from all those round tripping they are doing. So they know themselves. That's why you see it's easy for them to come out and reveal that his refinery never had a license, which he hasn't denied, and that is uh, not complete, which also he hasn't denied. Um, moving on to the NERA devaluation. But can um, you believe that Nigeria president will go and commission a refinery that is not completed? That's Nigeria for you. Okay, if we we'll go back on that, I know that they said they will start production in August. Which August? We told the media. Uh, this, this August? August? Yeah, that they will start production. They said, they've said that the refinery will start production since Buhari commissioned it. They said it will start that year. That was 2023. Mm -hmm. They've postponed. It will start, it will start, it will start for almost 10 times now. So, mm. so Dango is someone who some of us... <clears throat> actually envy because of the success and i don't the, envy him i don't envy him so let's talk about another thing please okay then the narrative devaluation is the next thing on my on my list narrative devaluation uh what do you have to say about that because the president in his speech even though i agree that his speech was baseless and i don't work for nta his speech doesn't really have any substance per se uh there's some things he actually mentioned <laughs> part of it is reducing our debt servicing ratio which is a very, very big factor. We worry was on 98%. We're able to drop that to uh, 68% or so, I believe. That's huge. 
to the economy. If Again, we don't care about it because we don't have to think about it. Go ahead. If if you are borrowing perpetually, as we speak, they are still borrowing. The people that are giving you the loans, are you not going to be servicing their debt as well? So if you claim that your debt to uh, revenue debt ratio to is yeah. yeah, debt to this, you know, there's there are two things, okay, in in this okay. debt and so many so many of it is semantics, right? <laughs> There's a debt to GDP that is what he told you is 68%. It's reduced, yeah. But the biggest one is debt to revenue. The debt to revenue remains very high. That is, if the debt servicing is not even higher than revenue, a lot of times. Because our revenue is tied to oil exploration and export. And a lot of countries are no longer even buying Nigerian oil. The U.S. hasn't imported in a long time, so um, yeah, that's so that different between you uh, know debt to GDP, which is the easiest one to bandy around, but there's also debt to revenue, which is the present uh, and uh, the present danger to to Nigeria, and that is because they keep borrowing. It's not like they stop borrowing. If they keep borrowing, that is going to always be a problem. Yeah, um, uh, the debt to revenue that you talk about, I'm just I want to say that because the debt is also higher because of the government expenditure, I think that's where a lot of that comes from. So we are in agreement there. Uh, talking about moving on to full subsidy, you know, that big thing which is kind of huge. I, I you know, I, I sent you a message that my next uh engagement is at, uh, at 12 40. So I have three more minutes. If uh, you know, I will have yeah, to come course, yeah. back Let's to your show. Up, yeah. I apologize. No, no worries. Yeah, we started. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah, but I was going to ask you about the 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 full subsidy, yes. like getting the full subsidy. Um, like how quickly do you think that can be reversed, or how quickly do you think that can be brought back? Well, you know, fuel is when I mean fuel. I'm talking about petroleum products, right? Only petrol is subsidized right now. Kerosene is not subsidized. Diesel, no, diesel yeah. is not subsidized. Right. Jets yeah. A14 yeah. is not subsidized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If those unsubsidized petroleum products are not giving you El Dorado, what are you talking about? And even the petroleum subsidy they said they have now, we're hearing that the subsidy still, the Minister of Finance just said that they're still spending over $600 million every month to import fuel. Mm. Yeah, so, I heard about that. Yeah. Yes, that's what he said openly. Mm -hmm. And that's about two trillion naira every month to import fuel. Mm. Where does it go to? Because all of this is driven by corruption. One, there's an inflated figure of how many we use and how much goes to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. There's the issue of corruption of people who are not importing but who get subsidy paid to them. There's the issue of those who have access to customs and immigration who take fuel out of the country and then come and blame the people. Everything you see about fuel subsidy wasn't the problem of subsidy. It was a problem of laxity and criminality on behalf of government officials. Mm. So, otherwise, there's nothing wrong with subsidy. Every country in the world subsidized uh, vulnerable and poor. So... Um, there's nothing wrong, and that's why I never, never support removal of subsidy. And by the way, my time is up. If you can, yeah, well, what's your, do you have the last word for the protesters before you go? What, um, what's your well, well, I'm calling on them to understand that everybody will be back for the grand finale of the first 10 days on, on August 10th. So please, protesters, dust your boots, your placards, and your courage. You know, and we march once again uh, around Nigeria's wall of Jericho. This time it must collapse. Nigeria, they use computer. The leaders of Nigeria, they use radio where they turn the knob.